right, I want to welcome y'all to another episode of For the Culture, man. We calling this the East Side Stories, episode one. Hey, yo, what TV is that? HBO. HBO? What's up? Gangsta Lou in the house for mob style. All right, Gangsta Lou. Now we got a New York City legend in the building. We got a man who made his name in the streets, not on social media. You know, being from an era where you had to be outside and active to earn your rep. Now, without no further ado, we got the big homie Gangsta Lou in the building, man. Gangsta Lou, tell the people where you from, man. Yeah, this is Boogaloo, a.k.a. Gangsta Lou, the original Gangsta Lou, repping that Harlem thing, the Bronx, Brooklyn, Queens, you know, repping that mob style thing, you feel me? Now, Lou, my first question for you is, man, how did that mob style group even come about? Well, if you want to know how mob style started, to be honest with you, mob style started after AZ got shot up. I went and visited him in the hospital, and he told me it was over, like... No more hustling, no more money, no more cars, no more bitches. I told him he was crazy, but yeah, it's obvious he had a plan. He had a good plan. We uh, went to the one of them appliance stores where they sell all of the stereo equipment and all that, and he went and got the speaker with the mic connected to it. We go up in the apartment, you know, fuck around, and you know, came up with the mob style thing. The rest was just basically history. For the people that don't know, how'd you get the name Gangsta Lou? When did they start calling you Gangsta Lou? Opposed to Boogaloo from Harlem. Back then, it was a little rough. It was a lot of money in the street, but the killers was in the street also, you know? Just like I stress all the time, it was definitely no telling, you know? It was nothing but real shit going on. Like, you know, you could do a lot of things and nobody would tell on you. Like, you know, if you ran in the building, old ladies would open their door and let you run and hide in their house and shit like that. I mean, the money was there, the cars was there, the jewelry was there, but you know what comes with it, man. You know, prison, death, a lot of shit, man, you know? Now, this to familiarize the people with the mob style now. Who were the members of mob style? How did you guys meet? And how did y'all form that group? I'm familiar with um, Pretty Tone, Whip Wop, yourself, AZ. Now, who was the pioneer of the whole shit? Well, I got to give that credit to AZ. I mean, the name he came up with, I would truly say. Um, the whole idea was basically his. I don't know how he met Tone Capone, but yeah, Tone Capone, Whip Wop. You know, Whip Wop was my little man, you know. I had put him up under my wing when he was a real little guy. I used to have him up in the fever with me. He was 13 years old. I used to have him in disco fever with me. And uh, even though he was 13, he had the mind of a 30-year-old man. So, yeah, um, that's how Whip Wop became with us. Yeah, the plan was AZ's plan from the start as far as the music. Like, I remember when he told Alpo and Rich one day, we were standing on the corner, that we was going to start doing albums and shit. And, uh... Our poor and rich, they was laughing so hard, they was holding their stomachs like they couldn't stop laughing. And me and A was looking at them like we was real upset because at that time, mob style was just really starting to pop. But, you know, we street niggas, you know, who would ever thought that we would be rapping and shit? So, yeah. The younger generation, you know, when they think of Harlem, they might think of the ASAP mob, Dipset, BBO. Would you say that you was the first real gangster rap group coming out of Harlem? And do you feel that you guys get the recognition for being that, for paving the way for Harlem niggas as far as in the music industry? I could say from some, but not from most, though. You hear me? As far as the rappers that you name, these guys, man, you know, the, some of them is, you know, all right with me, and then there's some of them that ain't. But at the end of the day, you know, the niggas who made it, who really made it, like, you know, the locks and, you know, niggas like Biggie, and you know, certain niggas, you know, nah, certain niggas that really pay homage to mob style, you know, those are the ones that I could truly say I truly do respect and I truly do love. Cause at the end of the day, they know where it all started. They know their history. Like, you know, if you don't know where you're from, how you know where you're going? I say that to say that for me to just sit here and just say bad things about niggas that's trying to make it or niggas that don't pay homage, I'm not gonna do that. But at the end of the day, they know what it is. You know what I'm saying? What's understood don't need to be explained, my nigga. Like Harlem, Bronx, Brooklyn, Queens, Staten Island, Long Island, Jersey. Everybody know, like, mob style, we started this. Like, niggas didn't know nothing about no piping on no seats. Niggas didn't know nothing about BBSs and painting the rims. Niggas didn't know nothing. Niggas didn't know nothing about Louis Vuitton. Niggas didn't know nothing about Gucci. Niggas didn't know nothing about Chris Dow. Niggas didn't know nothing about nothing. Like, we started everything. Like, I'm going to get real cocky on your shit. Like, at the end of the day, we started all this shit, man. All this shit they talking, it's our lives, man. 
But for me to be mad and for me to feel like a nigga owe me a got, just as long as niggas respect me and respect my team, it's all good, my nigga. Real shit. That's a big fact. That's a big fact. Now, let me ask you a question, man. How you feel when you hear niggas like Styles P spitting a verse and mentioning mob style? Even the newer generation, niggas like Dave East paying homage to mob style, wit wop, da 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 on his shit. Now, how that make you feel just being one of the elder statesmen of Harlem and when you see a younger cat paying homage, how that make a nigga feel? I don't really think words could explain it, bruh. Like, on some real shit, like... Shout out to Dave East and the locks, you know, Styles P, you know, Puff, you know, bad boy. Yeah, man, that shit fucks me up, man. It really do, man. Like, yo, I don't know, man. You know, what else can I say, man? Like, you know, they know I love them, man. You know what I mean? I know them niggas love me back. You feel me? So at the end of the day, man, it's a good feel. It's a great feeling, man. You know, God is great, man. Real shit, man. Explain to the viewers your relationship with Rich Porter and explain to the people what Rich meant to Harlem. Rich was something else, man. He was a one of a kind, man. Well, how I met Rich was really through A. That's his brother-in-law. You know, they got the baby together, uh, you know, uh, Pat Porter. That's AZ's baby mother, which is Richard Porter's sister. Yeah, Rich was truly something else, man. Like, uh, he was special, man. You know, he liked to brag, but not brag to put you down. Brag to, like, uplift you and, you know, really let you know, like, if I did it, you could do it too, like, type of bragging. But... He was a special guy. Like, I remember I chilled with him on his birthday one time, and we was riding around in his convertible, and uh, he stopped, like, maybe like maybe a car behind another car at the red light. So I, I'm sitting in the passenger seat, but I'm not really acknowledging why, but when he pulled off, I, I asked him, I said, yo, Rich, like, you know, why you take up so much space? Like, why you ain't pull up some more? He said, yo, bro, when you driving in the streets, like, you always want to give yourself room just in case somebody run up on your car, you able to make moves. So that was one jewel he dropped on me on his birthday. But then the ultimate jewel he dropped on me that he showed me that blew my mind back then and it still blows my mind to the day. He showed me actually how to get all the way from 132nd all the way to 145th in St. Nick without a red light catching us. And I felt like, yo, for him to do that and know the streets really, the lights like that, like, you really got to be Harlem, you really got to be street. Like, a lot of these dudes say they street, but street ain't in them. So, yeah, he was real street, you did? Now, Lou, we know you came up around some legendary cats, man. Now, what was AZ like back then? Was he quiet and low-key the way they portrayed him in the movie? Or was that depiction a little bit off? Or from your perspective, what type of cat was AZ like coming up? AZ was always chubby, man, you know? I ain't gonna lie to you, bro. Like, when I do my movie, man, or, you know, man, listen, man. A was fly than everybody, man. He was fly because he didn't know he was fly. And I know that shit might sound crazy, but, you know, I I, I talk like that sometimes. But sometimes I, I know how to make sense out of shit that don't sound like it makes sense, too. Like, what I mean by being fly and not knowing he was fly was, if A went and bought a car, he got in the car, but people saw the car, but they looked past the car. They wanted to look at the person who was driving the car. And when they looked at it, it was a fat nigga with a gap in between his teeth, with his hair nappy, with rubber bands on his hand, hands ashy as a motherfucker, jeans looking raggedy, but he might have about 100,000 on him in the car. So, you know, I mean, A was fly than everybody, man. I mean, he was truly fly than everybody. And then when he got to know he was fly, that's when he lost it. Like, he truly lost it. Like, you know, I could tell you stories for days, man, but I call them like, you know, the good, the bad, the ugly, you know? I would say A was the good, Rich was the bad, and Poe was the ugly. Yeah, man, you know, A, he shined even when he was dull, man. I could truly tell you that, man. He, he was always a diamond, man. Even when he didn't even want to be one, he was a diamond. That's what made him a diamond. And we know AZ is your homie, right? And Rich was your homie, and you was also cool with Poe. When shit went left after Rich got killed, and the streets started whispering that Alpo had something to do with it allegedly now. Being that you was cool with all parties involved, after Rich was killed, how did you take that and then how did you feel about the individual that they were saying that had something to do with it? Well, I still feel fucked up about it. 
the reason why I feel fucked up about it, you know, for real, for real, is because I'm the one who brought Poe around. You know what I'm saying? I'm actually the one who actually just like really just brought him in the circle. Like I said on the first DVD, like, how do you kill something that love you? He was with A first, because I brought him to A, you feel me? At the end of the day, like I told you, A just moved completely different. A's really never been like a street, like out there, like club or none of that type of dude. Whereas Rich wasn't really like that neither, but Rich, like, you know, he hang out. He, he be in the street more than A, you know what I mean? So, you know, I guess Post started gravitating, you know, closer to Rich. And, you know, Rich felt like, you know, that was A man. So, you know, Rich did what, you know, a real nigga would do he put him up under his wing and trusted him and you know this was the outcome of it the shit hurt me so much because you know i heard his interview on why he did what he did and my thing is this you know when a nigga's a boss and i'm gonna say it again man i want the world to hear this man when a nigga's a boss you me or no one can do anything to a boss for lying or for any other reason, my nigga. Not a boss, my nigga. You understand what I'm saying? Not something that you love, my nigga. You feel me? So, I mean, like, if that was the case, you know how many times A lied to me? But it is what it is, man. You know, like, you know, who am I to, like, sit here and speak on, you know, why this man did what he did? I don't really know, bro. But, you know, I could truly tell you it hurt me, man. Because like I told you, man, I was the one that brought him in. So, yeah, I lives with this shit every day, man. You know, maybe if I didn't, man, Rich would still be alive, man. You know, that's why my whole motivation is no motherfucking friends, man. You got to be family to fuck with me from now on, man. Like, yo, my nigga, like, this shit really hurt. Like, yo, I hate to even really talk about it, man. But I live with this shit, man. I brought the man in, man. And if he listening and when he hear this shit, man, he know everything I say is facts, man. I say it in his face, though. I brought him in, man. Now, Lou, now, from your point of view, man, how did Darnell's and Rich's murders impact Harlem, man? And what do you remember about that time, my nigga? Because, you know, a lot, of, a lot of people say that when Rich got killed, they not only killed Rich, but they killed Harlem. True facts, bro. Like, yo... That night, man, that shit happened to Rich. I was just with him, man, five hours before he died, bro. So that's another vision that'll never leave me to the day I leave here, bro. You know, I remember what he had on, man, the Black Mermont. I don't remember what kind of boots he had on, but he had on the Black Mermont, and he had a smile on his face, and I was looking at him because I was tripping to myself, like, damn, man, for him, you know, just to have his little brother missing, you know, he's still trying to, like, you know, be normal and shit, but I knew he wasn't normal. And the minute he walked away, it was like he walked right into his death, man. So yeah. And as far as Darnell was concerned, like that shit definitely, that shit fucked everybody up. Anybody who's a parent, anybody who's a brother, a sister, an aunt, an uncle, a cousin, like, yeah, man, that shit was really a tragedy. Like, you know, like, man, I can't even really tell you, man, like, yo, my nigga, like, the shit is like, yo, Words, man, I don't really think words is for a lot of things, man. And, and, and that's just one of the issues that, I mean, uh, one of the subjects that I don't think really words can really, like, describe the feeling, like, you know. And, and as far as um, Rich being dead and did Harlem die when Rich died, man, like, Rich was the king. He was the king, my nigga. Truly, he was the fucking king, my nigga. It's still dark after his death, my nigga. It ain't been sunny since, my nigga. Like, the sun it rises, my nigga, but it's still dark, man. It's gonna always be dark, my nigga. That, I mean, him and his little brother, man, it's gonna be dark forever, bro. Like, shh. Now, as you know, my nigga, the world know that Alpo was home. You know, he did his time. He paid his debt to society or whatever you might say. People say the things that they say about Alpo and things of that nature, but... You also got to include, man, the dude was a dangerous cat. I mean, to keep it real with you, man, I don't expect niggas to do nothing to say nothing to that man. You understand what I'm saying? Because like you said, the man was dangerous. So at the end of the day, my nigga, I think he's dealing with it, you know, mentally himself. I don't really think nobody really could do nothing to him, you know? after what he's done. I think only he could do something to him. Like, I, I, 
I just like, you know, I believe in God, my nigga. Like, you know what I'm saying? There is a God, you feel me? And who am I to judge? Like, for me to just talk bad about the man and all that, you know, I mean, at the end of the day, man, if a nigga, you know, ain't going to do nothing, you know what I mean? Niggas ain't going to do nothing. Like, what the fuck do you expect? Like, you feel me? It is what it is, man, you know? I don't expect Harlem, you know, Harlem niggas to do nothing to that man, you feel me? I think he's dealing with a lot of shit himself, man. Like, he can't go certain places. A lot of people going to look at him as, as, as being bad, no matter how many people, you know, like him or rock with him. So this is shit that he got to live with, my nigga. Like, you know, he, he you know, I, I really truly believe, like, this man probably have nightmares about shit, my nigga. I don't really know. I haven't talked to him, you know, since that shit. You know what I'm saying? I haven't talked to him in a very, 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 very long time. So I don't really know. Like, you know what I'm saying? I heard what he said. I was, like I said, I was kind of upset about it because I don't feel like that's a valid reason. But, you know, I haven't talked to the man. So, you know, I can't really judge or really give too much, you know, you know what I feel niggas going to do or what niggas should do or what niggas ain't going to do. I don't expect niggas to do anything because niggas was scared of him before he went in and they're going to be scared of him now he home, you know, and that's just that, bro. I'm keeping it 2000 with you. Like, it is what it is, bro. And then you got some niggas that ain't scared of him. You know, you talking to one. So, yeah, it is what it is, bro. Yo, my nigga, we appreciate your time, man. Thanks for coming to For The Culture and tapping in with us, man. We definitely appreciate your time. But, though, let the people know where they can find you at, man. Let the people know about the Gangster Lou Chronicles. What's your direction that you're going with that channel? And just just tell the people about what you got going on right now. 2019, man, the No Friends movement, man. Um... Yeah, I got the No Friends shit. No Friends shit is actually uh, music that I did that uh, God Bless the Dead Boogie Bonds, which is AZ Lil' Brother. He passed away not too long ago. Rest in peace, Boogie Bond. You know what I mean? And um, that was one of the reasons why I put the um, the No Friends uh, 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 project out. And then I got the, you know, the um, Gangsta Lou Chronicles, Volume 1, Volume 2. You know, I'm on YouTube. You know, I'm on the gram, Gangsta Lou 145. You can holler at me at any time. Um, yeah, um, and then I got the Gangsta Lou story from one gangster to another. The original Gangsta Lou story, you feel me? Which is just a spinoff to pay them for. All you kids out there, all you young niggas out there that's listening and all you young young ladies out there, y'all just stay in school, man, for real, man, because, you know, that's the only way out, man. School, my niggas. I'm telling you facts, yo. Like, I did dumb shit. Like, I left school in 11th grade, and I went to Manhattan Tech, which was an all-boys school. Like, I mean, yeah, man, I made, like, probably one of the biggest mistakes of my life, man, just leaving school. So, yeah, man, that's, like, one of the real messages I want to just, you know, give to the youth. And I want to give a little shout-out to all my niggas that's locked up up north, all my niggas in Manhattan House, all my niggas that's on the island. You feel me? And I want to give a shout-out to Book Bank. To my nigga Glenn Toby, you know, to my nigga D'Anthony, you feel me? The book bank team, you dig? And uh, Mob Style, you know what I mean? You know, my No Friends family, 145 St. Nick, Harlem, Bronx, Brooklyn, you know what I mean? And, you know, all my real niggas and my homies, you know what I mean? The Billies and Shines, you know what I mean? Yeah, man, and I got to give a shout out to Infamize and Culture. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying? For giving me the opportunity to do what I do, you dig? And I want to give a shout out to myself, man. Gangsta Lou, the one and only gangster, the original Gangsta Lou. And I holler at your boy, man. Gangsta Lou 145 on the gram. Yo, my nigga, I appreciate you so much, bro. Good looking, homie. Peace. Shit, man. Just was my man first. Like, I remember the first night I met Jess, man. I, I met Jess. In the fever, man. He used to always be in the fever. I used to always be in the fever. And I used to always be watching him because he used to always have his jewelry and shit on him.